This quick OWC video is going to teach you all about using Dropbox on your desktop. Now, if you read the article below, I go into a lot of good detail about this, but I want to show you some tips and tricks live to help you out. So first, let's talk about setting up your Dropbox. Now, when you first launch Dropbox, you're going to end up in a web platform that looks something like this, depending on the files and folders that you have up there. If you've used something like Google Drive before, you'll be very used to this. One thing you may not have done is synced your Dropbox to your desktop. That's this icon right up here that I'm showing you. When you sync your Dropbox to your desktop, Dropbox adds a little application to your computer that starts to read a folder on your computer, like this one right here. Anytime you make changes to the contents of that folder, Dropbox will automatically update what you see on the web. For example, if I make a new folder here and call this demo folder, you can see right away on the web, it made an untitled folder and then it updated itself to the demo folder. That's because those are all of the steps of action that I took here on my desktop. The Dropbox app synced what was happening and then sent it up to the web. Conversely, whatever I do on the web will update what's on my desktop. For example, if I don't need this demo folder anymore, I can select it and then just delete it. By deleting it on the web, it will delete it on my computer. Now Dropbox on your desktop has some pretty cool functions that are really important for a workflow like this. They are Smart Sync and Selective Sync, which may not be called that anymore as Dropbox has been updating the naming conventions of some of their tools. So the first is going to be Selective Sync. I'm going to come up to my Dropbox application here, open up my preferences, head over to Test Sync, and look at my Sync preferences. Let's talk about Selective Sync first. Selective Sync asks you to select folders on your computer that you want Dropbox to actually have show up on the computer. So by choosing Select Folders, it will let me choose any folder that I want on my Dropbox and say, don't sync this to my computer. Now I'm not gonna change anything right now because I do need all of my files and folders, but you can see that my Dropbox has about 26 terabytes and I definitely don't have that much free space left on my computer here. So for safety, if I wanted to remove some files and folders from my computer, I could simply open up my folder here with all of my files and folders in it, select folders that I no longer need, and just uncheck them. When I click update, they'll be removed from the computer, but will still be available on the Dropbox web platform. Now that's a really cool tool, but if I head back to my preferences here, I have another option called Smart Sync. Now, Smart Sync happens at the folder level, not in the preferences. The preferences just provide a couple of useful options for you that I like to set up like this. So I say, turn off saving hard drive space automatically. I like to manually choose what files and folders will be synced and which ones will not, and I don't want Dropbox to choose for me. Then, under Files Added on Web Default to Online Only. This way, anytime a new file is added to the web or from a collaborator who's also working in a folder that you're sharing, any new files that are created will be set to online only, meaning that if they are huge files, they won't automatically begin downloading on your computer without your permission. Now, if you're working in a team, you can uncheck let my admin manage this setting. This way you have complete control over your own Dropbox. Let me show you how SmartSync works. Now I have project number three here. It's got about 388 megabytes. I know that's pretty small, but if you have a small hard drive and you want to save some space, that could be a lot of megabytes. So I can right click on this folder here and I have a couple of different options. Under Smart Sync, I have two choices, local or online only. Now, if you're using a newer version of OS X or a newer version of Dropbox, this may look slightly different, but the language will be very similar. Now, if I change this to online only, what we're going to see happen is all of my green check marks will turn blue and then they'll turn gray. Once they turn gray like this with a little cloud icon, these files and folders are no longer available on my actual computer. I can see them. I can see that the footage is sitting there, but I can't actually open it because it's no longer on the computer. The only thing that's actually here on the computer is a reference to that file. I can simply select that file, right click, choose Smart Sync and say local, and that will go ahead and download the 40 megabyte file. But here's the important thing. Even though I've gone ahead and unsynced it from my computer, it's still perfectly safe here on Dropbox. Project number three, footage, and there's all of my footage. 
This workflow is core to how I use Dropbox. Something that I'll... Now a quick note about Dropbox versions and OSX versions. If you are on OSX Monterey or above, and you're on a current version of Dropbox as of this recording, then when you open up another application, for example, Premiere, and you try to import files that are set to be online only, you're going to get an error message. That's because Dropbox needs to actually download the files first. Now I'm on an older OS X, although I'm on a current update of Dropbox. If I open up Premiere and import some of these files here that are set to online only, Dropbox will actually automatically begin downloading them for me and then import them. Now a quick important note about how Dropbox on your desktop works. I'm currently using Dropbox synced to a folder on my internal hard drive on my iMac, which means that this hard drive cannot be ejected or removed from the computer. This is pretty good for Dropbox because the Dropbox application here is constantly looking at changes inside my folder so that it can go ahead and update those changes to the web. Now, if you were to go ahead and save your Dropbox on an external hard drive that you've plugged into your computer with like a Thunderbolt 3 cable, the problem is that if you have the Dropbox app running, like it is right now, constantly syncing and looking at files on my computer, and you go ahead and eject that hard drive without asking Dropbox to pause syncing, Dropbox will assume that because the files and folders have been removed as the hard drive was ejected, that it should just say, oh, this file is no longer here, let me go ahead and update the web with that information. That would be the same thing as simply taking an entire project, right-clicking, choosing to move to trash, and it's gone now from the desktop or from the hard drive, when I head back to my demo folder here, it's gone here as well. It's pretty much the exact same thing. Now, the nice thing about Dropbox that I especially love is that it gives you 180 days, as of this recording, of rewind history or restoring deleted files. Now, you can see that these files have in fact been deleted. They're no longer here on the web, and they're no longer here on my desktop. But if I needed that project back because I made a mistake in deleting those files, I can do that in two really simple ways. First, in the web interface, I can come up to the three dots, choose Show Deleted Files. Here are all the different files and folders that have been in this folder at some given point in time. Choose Project Number 2, select it, and then say Restore. If I click Restore here and restore all the files, once Dropbox is done restoring, that will all show up back on my computer, no harm done. It'll continue to download until it catches up. And it looks like we're all set here. Now another option here, open up the three dots and choose Rewind This Folder. You're going to get this little side panel here, and you can choose to rewind your folder back to any time in the last one year. I'm going to say Try Rewind. Here it's going to show me activity that has happened. I'm going to pick a good place to start, like yesterday. Choose Continue. And I can show all the history, everything that has ever happened in this folder. And I can choose a point in time to rewind this folder to. You can see this is as far back as it goes, because I just made this folder today for all of you. It's a really powerful way of restoring deleted files and one of my favorite implementations of saving information that you may have accidentally lost. Okay, let's talk about using Dropbox with video projects now. So you can see here I have three different projects. They'll have a Premiere project file. Let me just open up project number one. I'll go ahead and import my footage. Dropbox is in fact just a file on your computer. So you can go ahead and import, choose footage, and select my footage here. Now I have my footage. I'm going to go ahead and just drag all of these clips and drop them in the timeline and make this okay. So this is perfect. These are the clips that I wanted in my timeline. And I'm just going to go ahead and make a really quick edit of this scene. Now I've decided that this is a perfect edit for my scene and the client will be very happy. So I've gone ahead and sent this out to them and I've received some feedback from the client. Now, unfortunately, I am way too busy to keep working on this project. So I'm going to hire someone to help me out. I want them to work in my architecture, but let's just pretend for example, that this is actually a huge project with a lot of footage. I don't want to ask the person that I've hired to be responsible 
for having their own Dropbox account with enough free storage space to be able to contain the folder that I'm going to share with them. So here's what I can do instead. Because I'm on a Dropbox team subscription, I get three seats on my team. Now I'm presently only using one of those seats, but what I can do is I can go ahead, come up to my admin panel here, come down to my members, I can invite a new member and give them another seat. This will give them their own personal folder on Dropbox and access to the main folder on Dropbox that contains all of the personal folders. Now let me show you what I mean by that. In here, I'm in my own personal folder. This contains all of my projects for all of my clients. I work inside of my own personal folder. You can see that my personal folder is right here. And it's pretty huge, about 56 terabytes worth of footage. Now outside of my personal folder is the main Dropbox folder. This is where everything is contained. And in here, I have two more folders. One for an existing client that I'm working with where I have a collaborator and another demonstration for this tutorial. So once I add a new collaborator to my team, they're gonna see this, except instead of seeing my name here, they're gonna see their name. They won't have access to any of the files or folders that are in my personal folder. They will have their own personal folder and access to anything that I have chosen them to have access to by simply placing it outside of my personal folder. So I can simply take project number one here and I can duplicate it just in here. This will make a nice duplicate for them and they can work on the duplicate. Once my collaborator is done working on their duplicate project file, I can simply take their project file, I can duplicate it again, I can version it up, let's call this version two, and drag it out of this folder back into my personal folder. This will remove it from the collaborator, placing it safely inside my folder. This way, my collaborator can no longer access or change this file, meaning I have taken back control of the project without the ability for someone else to make changes now that I've returned it back to my folder. This is just good housekeeping, so you don't accidentally have somebody overwriting work that you're trying to actively work on. The other great thing about this method, if you're on a Mac, your hard drive is formatted as APFS or Apple File System. The great thing about APFS is that if I take project number one, and let's just assume it's a huge project, let's call it 1.5 terabytes, for example, and I only have another 600 gigabytes of free space remaining on this drive, I can take project number one and I can duplicate it to another destination on my computer, even if it's also in Dropbox, and it won't actually take up more hard drive space. That's because duplicated files and folders in the APFS or Apple file system do not take up a duplicate amount of space. They are basically instances of each other as opposed to copies of each other. Hopefully these tips and tricks for using Dropbox in your own small post-production company will help you out a lot. Of course, there are many alternatives to Dropbox, and I have all of them. Box.com, Google Drive, Lucidlink. All of them are fantastic in their own ways, and all of them have issues in their own ways. For me, Dropbox is a fantastic solution. But for you, another solution might be Google Drive, Box.com, if you have a Jellyfish NAS with Jellyfish Remote, or Lucidlink, or some other cloud system. Whatever works for you, try to find a workflow that is simple to take care of, cost-effective for your needs, and allows collaborators to work with you regardless of folder size.